good morning, good morning, Grand Rising, Grand Rising, Grand Rising. Please excuse the no makeup, no lashes, none of that stuff today. But I'm out exercising anyway, you guys. Um, oh God. I'm gonna to try to do this video as quick as possible and have y'all look at the water or something instead of looking at me with no makeup on today. But the message is more important than having, you know, lashes or makeup or having my hair done today. The message is more important. So anywho, welcome to my channel. Hit that like button and hit that share button. This is Kajin, my life, my journey. Okay. So, um, the last time I spoke to you guys, well, the last time I, I spoke to you guys, I told you that I was going to leave a message um, concerning um, um, my COVID test um, at NYU. So I went to NYU on the 15th because on the 19th, I, had, I was supposed to have surgery, right, supposed to have surgery. Unfortunately, the next day when I got the results, from um, my MyChart app, it said detected, meaning that I had basically um, tested a positive for COVID. So, yeah, shocked the hell out of me too. And the reason why I'm saying that like that is because I'm like the cleanest, the most like anal person there is when it comes to you know, washing hands, wiping down everything. Hell, I even got a whole uh, quarantine closet in my apartment. Okay, where everything that I take off, I throw in the closet. Like, you know, ugh. anywho, I ended up catching um, one of the strands. Even after the first dose of the vaccine, I also took the first dose of the vaccine. But what took me so long to come back and talk to you guys was I was so angry. I was so hurt. I was so disappointed because I felt like I had let everybody down. That was the first thought. I'm gonna go through all the emotions. The first emotion was I was I was sad. I was disappointed because I had I felt like everybody is waiting for you know the surgery and hell you're gonna be waiting for it no more than i am i promise you um it was for my breast augmentation you guys which was supposed to happen april 19th but it didn't because i tested positive for covid um so yeah so that delayed it um it set my surgery back like six months for a breast dog now I think I think it's in October now I mean they gave me so many freaking apart appointments I just I, I, anywho during the quarantine and isolation time and I live alone so it was pretty easy for me to quarantine you know safely without you know possibly passing it to someone else or whatever I don't know how I got it but I remember this organization calling me here in New York um, on the phone, apparently when you test positive for COVID, um, like the state calls you or whatever, and they, um, they check up on you every single day. So they want to hear, and they trace back for, um, for like 10 days, uh, well, four days prior to the symptoms. They will trace back to like four days prior to that. And four days prior to that, I was in Manhattan doing outreach, at Cajun's Outreach for the Homeless. I was giving out, I even put it on, um, um, as a matter of fact, I think it was on my way. I was on my way to do the test and I was doing outreach on the way. Yeah. Anywho. But the, I don't, I don't think it happened. I think it happened around that time. How it happened, it could have happened on the bus because I'm not around anyone, you guys. I don't have like boyfriends coming over i don't have company coming in my apartment like i i isolate myself especially when i know it's time for for um surgery i kind of do this nesting thing where i start sterilizing my home um making sure that everything is up um like here this level you know on shelves so i can reach it so there's no bending or no heavy no you know reaching or anything for any surgery you know i make sure that it's at a left arm reach level so i was doing all that stuff preparing my home and everything preparing myself so when i caught covid and i had to isolate you guys you had to stay home you have to stay home um and you have to isolate yourself now they will call you 
they will call you on the phone um yeah because your name and information goes in the system or whatever so they'll call you on the phone and they'll talk to you and ask you questions about tracing and stuff like that unbeknownst to me they literally were like really helpful for me during my quarantine during my isolation because I was depressed I was sad I was angry because this was the fourth time you guys four times could you imagine really seriously listen to me carefully could you imagine four times being turned down for different surgeries for different reasons four times <sighs> I can't even tell you how how sad or how depressed I was. And mind you, I'm going through the mental part of it and the emotional part, but I'm also suffering at home physically from the COVID. The good thing, the saving grace of it all was the fact that I had taken the first dose, so I had some level of protection from the variants, from these strands. Um, and so I didn't get as sick or I didn't die from it. Thank, you know, thank goodness. Um, thank the universe. But the fact that I couldn't have surgery, the first time it happened, four years ago, I had just came to New York. I had got on the waiting list. I had got accepted and I had went for my, my um, pre-labs and it was with Dr. Ting, I remember. I first went for Dr. Ting four years ago. And I was denied again. I was denied. That was the first time. That was because my enzymes and my liver were really high. And so they were suspicious that it might be cancerous. Let's check her out. Let's do run some tests. They run a bunch of tests. There's no cancer. There was no, it, it, they gave me some antibiotics. I started eating healthy. I turned my diet completely around to mostly fruits and vegetables. And I came back like six months later and did another test and my liver was fine. It's perfect. So now mind you, they had to close that off. So a year, I think a year went by or so. And then I said, let me go to um, Dr. Team. Um, again, but this time for my um, vaginoplasty and I went for the vaginoplasty and um, the first time um, Everything went this uh, so the second time everything went well This is my second time going for a surgery and then my you know everything's going well well for yeah, so everything went well the blood work as far as blood work is concerned, but then COVID hit and when COVID hit um hit uh, New York they shut down all elective surgeries so they had to delay my surgery once again so I, here I go again like this was supposed to be my bottom surgery here I go again another date another surgery canceled okay they reopen when they reopened I had already done all these months with researching about his work and Quite frankly, I was nervous and I had done a lot of research on him after. So it gave me time to research and I used that, research, that time to find out more information, talk to other girls, and I decided to not go with him. You guys know that. The videos are there. I'm not going to go through that whole conversation again. Um, so I ended up going to NYU because I heard so much um, praises about Dr. Rachel Blubon's work and how amazing she is. I saw her work. Um, some of my friends, some of my some of my associates, people, women that I know, <coughs> have went to her. You know, they've all went to her already, and they look amazing. Let me tell you, those are some pretty vaginas. <laughs> um, so I decided to do pretty much um, everything there: my breasts, my boobs, and my face. Uh, Dr. Rodriguez is going to do my face. Uh, Dr. Um, Rachel Blubon, my breasts, and my vaginoplasty. So um, I went there. Um, so I guess this is the third time, not the fourth time. I'm sorry. So yeah, I went there and um, this happened COVID. COVID happened. So yeah. Um, yeah. And I waited like a while. I waited a long while for Dr. Rachel Blubon. And, you know, in between that time that I did it, go see Dr. Ting. And 
So I was really disappointed. I'm like, this is the third time. This is the third time. Like, damn, when am I going to get my turn? You know, when am I going to get my turn? I'm seeing everybody, all my friends on Facebook, all my girlfriends, you know, having their boobs done and getting all these other surgeries done, the ones that I want. And they're just like speeding right on by. And I'm just like, oh my God, again, Kajin, again. So, it's just not my time yet, guys. Um, when it's my time, it's my time. So, my breast off has been rescheduled. My facial femme is still scheduled um, for next month. So, we'll see. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm sure, pretty sure I'm gonna have to do another COVID test to see if I'm, you know, if I'm free, if I'm good now, free of COVID or whatever. And the good thing about it is that now I have the antibodies of that particular variant of COVID in my system. So I can't get sick with that one again. But there's different strands. And so, yeah, the world's kind of fucked up right now, people. Um, so we just have to be safe and take care of ourselves and take care of each other. Um, so yeah, um, they, they what the what the what those people did the COVID people they get on the phone they call you they take your information they want to know they they there are so many freaking resources for people who test positive with COVID for people that get contract the COVID virus if you live with other family members or whatever and you need to you know isolate or whatever I'm telling you they will call you they will definitely call you and put you in a hotel room. They'll put you in a hotel room. There's nurses that are staying at the hotel as well. So if anything should happen, or if you should, if your if your if your virus should get worsen, get and you get sicker and you can't breathe and you need to go to the be rushed to the hospital, they're there. They're they're on call for you guys. So yeah, and you get food. Um, they feed you as much as you need. You stay there for as long as it takes for you to feel better. How amazing is that? I did not know that New York had those resources and I didn't need them and I didn't want to be selfish and take those resources from a family or a, a single person even that may have gotten infected and there's a lot of people who who had caught the, the virus I don't want to um, be greedy or selfish and take something that I don't need I have my own apartment I can isolate at home the only bad thing about that is that I was home um, with no food <laughs> I had no food I got no phone calls from nobody. Only, but I didn't let anybody like associates. I didn't let them know. I only let like a couple of family members know. And um, so I just so when you're when you are home and you're home alone, it's a lot to handle. You know, um, mentally and physically. Everybody has their life. Everybody has you know things going on in their lives and stuff. So people are not really and and. People are going through their own situations. And so, I was definitely going through mine, that's for sure. I mean, I had the sore throat. You know what's funny, though? I didn't start getting the symptoms until I left the hospital. Oh, that's my cousin. She texted me. Um, I hope she doesn't call me while I'm on live. Because, I, I mean, on this video. Because it's going to ruin the whole video. But, um... I'm going to have to call her when I finish. But, uh, yeah, so it's amazing to have all these resources for you. They even have, like, um, 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 people, when you, go, when you go home, people will just, they can still feed you. They'll send you, like, a week's worth of food. Pre-packaged, pre-cooked, already made food. Like, that's amazing. Like, they, they, they're doing some great things for people with COVID. So, that's amazing. But then again, you know, the state got all that money. These nonprofit agencies got all the money. So, they actually should be doing something. You know, some type of COVID relief programs for people. So, yeah, you guys. So, if you if you ever test positive, they will give you a call. And they will check on you. And if you need to isolate because if you live with people and you don't want and you love them and you don't want to get them sick, definitely take them up on that offer of going to a, a hotel until you feel better. Now, the hotel stay is, I mean, the, the COVID, what they kept telling me is 10 days, 10 days they want you. Originally, the CDC was like 14 days. You know what I'm saying? 14 days. Um, honestly, it's however long it takes you, your body to heal but according to the cdc it takes 
10 to 14 days for the virus to um, for you to feel better not to leave your system but to feel but, but you can be able to be around and do things again be around people but do things again and stuff like that um, I think I got that right or to leave your system I don't know but it's 14 days quarantine isolation or 10 days so the state the people that were calling me was telling me 10 days 10 days 10 days but at 10 days I was still feeling feverish I was still feeling fever so I stayed in the house um, I did have to go to the store I had no choice you guys I had to go to the store on my own I masked up double masked up put on my gloves put my shield on and I literally took my sick <laughs> like I was feeling so bad I had two masks on my face I had a shield on my face I had gloves on I was a mess I had goggles on my face I looked like one of those people from like um, like a movie like a hazmat movie um, setup you know just a mess I'm surprised I didn't cover my whole self in plastic child but yeah I went in there really quick got everything I needed from the supermarket and got out um, but that was close that was after like the 10 days because the 14 I took I did 14 days altogether in isolation I did because I felt like even after the 10th day I was feeling a little feverish but I had no food once again no food no food no food I have to survive I need orange juice I need water I need lots of liquids I need Tylenols I need all of that stuff and I have to depend on me to do it. So, hello. I went out there and I did what I needed to do. And I came back home. Um, so, the next four days, I definitely isolate. I stayed in the house. I continued to do what I was doing. And I'm better. <clears throat> I feel a lot better. I'm not feeling sick anymore. Um, it's gone. Um, this was... Oh, my God. I, I, I'm still you know staying home to myself because that's what i do i haven't even done outreach I, I couldn't do outreach i couldn't go to work and do health care and take care of anybody you know because of what was going on so my quarantine has been lifted the people don't have to call me anymore and by the way they will call you every single day to check on you and ask you how you feel and they are so polite whoever they're hiring to make the phone calls to you they were so polite i'm gonna tell you a little quick story so this little spent one day because what i was doing when they were calling me in that moment i'm sick i'm feeling bad when i was sick i was feeling so bad that i don't want to talk to nobody like i'm mad i'm angry i'm disappointed that i don't have my, my my fucking double D's on my chest, you know, I'm mad that the surgery didn't go through and this is the third time being turned down So I'm depressed until to like no end and then Here I got these people calling on me trying to check on me and trying to you know help me and I'm like I don't need no help. I just want to be left alone. Just leave me alone <laughs> Leave me alone. That's just what I was doing and I kept hanging up on them Honey, the, when that third phone call came in, and the guy and the and the girl was like, um, "Okay, okay, Miss, okay, ma'am, but we're gonna have to um, send somebody to uh, if you don't if you don't speak to us, we'll send someone to your house." Bitch, what? <laughs> I'm like, uh, what? You threatening me now? Oh, you threatening me? Oh, okay, but you know they come to my door, and the way I was feeling at that moment, they're gonna get cursed out. Because they can't do make me do anything. They're just going to get cursed out. And I would have slammed the door in their face. Because that's how bad I was feeling. Remember, surgery is, dis you know, is delayed. I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. I'm alone. No food. And they're calling me and bugging me. But I didn't want to hear what they had to offer me at the moment. So that was my mistake. Um, but... So one day, this little old lady, well, I'm not going to call her a little old lady. I don't know how this lady looked, so scratch that. But this this woman, this Spanish lady, she was definitely Spanish because I heard the Spanish accent. <clears throat> so she was so sweet and she was so nice and she was really trying to help me. And I felt so bad. I had to, I'll had tell you what I did later. But so when she called me, um... I was like, ma'am, could you just please leave me alone? I just want to be in peace. I just want to get through this isolation. I just want to get through this, this, this quarantining peacefully. That's all. I don't want nobody calling me, checking on me. I don't need anything from you. I don't even know where you're from. This was like the first or second phone call. And I didn't know where they were calling me from. I thought they were hackers, you guys. 
Yeah, yeah I thought they were hackers. I mean, not hackers, but scammers. I thought they were scammers. People were trying to scam me and get my information because they was asking me for my birthday, you know, um, so I can prove myself. And I'm like, bitch, I'm not giving you my information. I didn't say that to her, though, but I'm, you know, that's how I felt. I'm not giving you my information. And she was like, please, please, Miss Kishin, please, please. She said, listen, if you don't believe me, then call the number. And when you call, because I can't say, she says, I can't say where we're calling from. So I guess it's supposed to be anonymous. And they, it, it, it's a really good program. They, they really protect your you they really protect you your identity they protect your body they physically literally help you all the way around you guys and she was so incredibly sweet and this sweet lady just kept trying to get me to talk to her and i i just told her no i said no and i hung the phone up and then the next day someone called me and i started to open up a little more i started to feel a little bit better like by the fourth day third or fourth day so I feel a little bit better just a little bit I was still having crazy fevers chest my nose had stopped up so bad my nasal passage had stopped up so bad one night I couldn't breathe every time I would try to lay down no air was coming through I started to get scared so I got fully dressed literally got fully dressed and laid in my bed in case there was an emergency and I need to call an ambulance I better stay I better be dressed before these people come so um so that happened, um, but then I called back like towards the end of my quarantine, like around the 10th day, and I asked for that lady, and they said, we don't know who she is offhand, but I was like, I, I just want to apologize to her. I said, because I was so mean. I wasn't nasty. I didn't curse at her or anything. I just didn't want to talk to her, and I, was, I felt bad afterwards because <laughs> I was like, I was so me i was so rude to this lady and she was just trying to help me because she kept saying please 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 mommy let me help you and i was like no leave me alone leave me alone <laughs> how dramatic you know but uh, yeah so i'm better i feel better covid's gone i'm gonna go take another test um right before surgery <laughs> surgery is next month for um my face I'm not gonna follow this anymore you guys if it happens if that if I you know because they say that people can stay COVID positive they can test positive for COVID like months later some people or weeks later even after contracting it and then after the quarantine and, 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 and isolation is lifted that you could still be test positive for it so I'm gonna do two tests um, before surgery. I'm going to do one to make sure that it's, you know, just if, if it comes, if it comes back positive, I'm going to do a second one just to make sure it's not a false positive. Um, I don't know what's going on with the phone. This is a new phone. You guys, I told you I was going to buy a new phone, <coughs> but something's happening right now. I don't know what, I'm just, I'm not going to be on long, but, um, I love you guys. Thank y'all for hanging in there. Thank you for, um, um, being an audience and and, and, and following my you know, my journey with me. You know, I, I love taking y'all on my journey with me. It's just that I didn't know how to come to y'all and talk to you. I really didn't know what to say. I had no words. I literally had no words. I didn't know what to say to you guys. What was I going to say? What was I going to say? You know, what was I going to say <laughs> at that moment? I, I, I couldn't talk. I couldn't do anything but just like lay there and get better you can't go outside you know so yeah I'm good now um but yeah so even after I got better and and even after my quarantine was lifted and stuff I still didn't know what to say I remember one night I did five takes remember the night the last video that you see there me in the green shirt with the with the woman with the big afro on it that video that last video that I posted um that same day I went home and I said I'm gonna sit down at my table and I'm gonna talk to you guys and I'm gonna tell you what happened to me but even that night I did five takes <laughs> Because I didn't know what to say to y'all. I didn't know. I'm like, I disappointed myself, but I also disappointed my audience for people that was actually, you know, following the journey. And I don't know why I felt like I disappointed you guys. I know that's silly, but um, <clears throat> I did. I felt like I didn't things didn't go through the where they were supposed to. And you guys didn't get to see the results. You guys didn't get to see 
you know, what I got to go through physically um, post-op after that. And so that was a lot on my mind. And I was mad. I was mad as hell. And so that video, even the live, the fifth one that I did, I had to look at it again myself. And I said, no, don't post that because you sound very angry in that video. You sound very angry and no one's going to listen to you if you're angry. So <clears throat> once again, <clears throat> I love y'all. Um, hopefully, um, everything goes through for next month, June 22nd, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know, that's all I can say. I love you guys so much. Okay, um, thank you for staying with me, you know, <clears throat> and hanging in there with me. And, um, hit that subscribe and hit that like. I'm still going to take you on the journey with me. Good, I told you, I promised everybody. I did promise y'all, you know, good or bad. Good or bad. Good or bad. I'm gonna talk a minute. And yeah, this has all been bad. This has not been good. So this is the bad. So hopefully the good is coming soon, you guys. Let's stay positive. Let's love, and love on each other. Help somebody be kind to someone today, please. We have too much hate in this world. Too much people are trying to now segregate themselves more than ever, more than they ever have. So please, y'all, bring that love back. Bring that peace back. Bring that unity back, you know. More than ever now, show someone that you care about them. Um, I love you. Be safe. Continue to do everything you've been doing to keep yourself safe, like mask up, double mask if you have to. There's different variants out. Wash your hands constantly. Don't go around a crowd of people if you don't have a mask on your face, if you're not properly covered up, you know. Don't do not do that to yourself. Don't. Mm -mm. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start back my outreach probably tomorrow. Today, I'm just going to chill. I'm going to watch movies like I did yesterday. Order takeout, stay home, just because I feel lazy, and I just finished exercising, so I'm not gonna do anything else but go inside and take a shower and order some food. Whew, I was gonna do one more lap uh, down here. I see everybody down here now is like working out. Let's see. Yeah, there's people down there. Everybody is walking. But yeah, um, I love you guys. Stay good. Stay kind. Be good to each other. And I will talk to you later. Bye.